Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Being able to admit when you're wrong, well, it's not an easy thing to do, but uh, I'm here today to, to do just that. See, when I was first getting started, I spent a small fortune on gear, more specifically lenses, both uh, prime lenses and zoom lenses and, and wide lenses and long lenses and, and even focal lengths in between. And, and over time, I, I guess I quickly realized that I, I was always photographing the same way and rarely used the vast majority of the lenses I had acquired and figured why not just get rid of the ones I don't use and focus on the ones that I do. And this is the, the very moment where things began to go very wrong for me. But at the time, I felt that this was the practical approach and figured no sense holding on to expensive lenses I couldn't afford that I'm not even using, and at the same time reduce the amount of weight I was lugging around. And it just made a total sense to me. It was a win-win. So I ended up selling almost all my glass, albeit for a substantially lower price than I had paid, and, and was left with only two. And spent the next couple of years only using these two lenses for everything. And in this video, I want to share with you the lenses I sold, the two I kept, why I decided, decided to keep these two lenses, and why I think this decision ultimately hurt me in the long run. And along with the, the solution to this kind of self-inflicted uh, problem I, uh, I, put a, I uh, opposed on myself, I should say. So as far as the lenses that uh, I got rid of, they, they were pretty much all prime lenses. And here are some photos. These are very old photos. These are from a 2016 shot with a, a prime lens. And prime lenses are great. They're typically meant to be, or not meant to be, but uh, generally are thought to be sharper than zoom lenses. I'm not certain if that's still the case today with, uh, with the, the, the modern day zoom lenses that the companies are creating. If prime lenses are sharper than zoom lenses, I really can't tell a difference, but um, this is another image from 2016 shot with a prime lens, and they are lighter than zoom lenses, so there are definitely are some benefits to it, but there is a big drawback, and this image right here is one that really jumps out to me, once again, an image from 2016, but in this photograph, I was backed up all the way against a riverbank, and if you're not familiar with what, what prime lenses are, it's basically a fixed focal length lens with no zooming capabilities. So if it's a 23 millimeter prime, then that is what you have. You cannot zoom at all with it. And in this image right here, my back was all the way against this riverbank and there was nowhere for me to go. And I wanted to capture a little bit more of this rock. I wanted to be able to capture a little bit more of this area, this ledge here. I didn't want to quite be so close to the uh, the whitewash of this little, um, this tiny little waterfall in this river here, but there was nowhere for me to go. I couldn't back up any further and I couldn't zoom. So it was a major limitation. And then as I kind of progressed throughout the, the next year or maybe a few months, I'm not sure, I started to run into that same scenario using prime lenses where the, the fact that I couldn't zoom uh, in certain scenarios was a real hindrance because when I bought the prime lenses, I said, I can just zoom with my feet. It won't be that big of a deal. A couple of steps forward, a couple of steps back. What's the problem? It's easy. But if you're at the edge of a mountain or at the edge of a cliff, you obviously can't take an additional step forward or that will be a major issue. If your back is against the wall, so to speak, you obviously can't go back any further either to zoom out. So when it comes to outdoor and landscape photography, prime lenses do have some limitations. And that was really the big reason why I got rid of all my prime lenses. Um, but I decided to end up keeping my, uh, my wide angle zoom. Now that was really the lens that I was most excited about. I used a wide angle, 16 to 35 when I was shooting Sony, and I use that lens for, for so much. And wide angle zoom lenses are fantastic for creating these kind of sweeping vistas where it's just a very immersive look, almost that you can like step right into the scene. And what else is really cool about a wide angle lens is that it's such a foreign, um, I guess, look to what we see with our naked eye. The, the human eye sees around 50 millimeters, maybe 55 millimeters. So if you're shooting at 16 millimeters, that's something that's completely unusual for our eye to see on a day-to-day -day basis. So right off the bat, you're creating something that's a little bit more eye-catching, something that's a little bit unusual from what we see on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a, a, a great benefit of using such a wide focal length. But it creates just such a, an immersive look. It's like you can just step right into the scene and I really, really enjoy that. Now, one of the other big benefits is distortion. Now, distortion has a, a negative connotation. We think of distortion as kind of an ugly word, but when it comes to a wide angle lens, I personally believe that the distortion that it naturally creates is one of its biggest benefits. So using a wide angle lens, getting very, very close to your subject in this scene right here, I was maybe six inches, I don't know, maybe maybe a 12 inches from this cactus, but using uh, my 16 to 35 wide open at 16 millimeters makes this cactus just really, really jump off the screen, makes it look even bigger than it was in real life. And the little cactus thorns look so much more ominous. 
but by getting very, very close to your subject just makes that object look a lot larger. And this is probably my favorite example of this, where this little pond here, although it wasn't a pond, it was literally just a puddle in this area in Moab, but getting extremely close to it made it look so much larger than it actually was. It makes this reflection a look um, much more eye-catching, and it just makes this whole foreground area that much more um, kind of uh, interesting in the overall photograph. And then one more example right here from Boulder Beach. This uh, this getting really close to these rocks in the foreground made them seem even larger, but this image here is also a good example of what I find to be the biggest drawback of using a wide angle lens is the fact that it is a very condition dependent lens. In this particular scene, it worked out just fine. I was able to distort these boulders a little bit, make them a little bit more, uh, a little bit larger in the bottom portion of the frame, kind of anchor the image. The sky is very interesting, so it worked. But when you're using such a wide focal length, it's hard pressed to not have a larger portion of your image contained by the sky. So when the sky is not uh, performing well, or if it's just a, a bluebird sky, that's generally the situation that I find that'll kind of ruin a photograph. And this is a good example right here. This is the same exact day, just maybe an hour later, not even 30 minutes later, sky completely cleared. I'm zoomed um, all the way out in this scenario, but you can just see how a blank sky kind of can really ruin a photograph. It just looks like a huge area of nothingness. One more example here. I like this composition. It's got nice light. The sun is rising right up here to the left side of the frame but there's just absolutely nothing going on in the sky. So when the conditions aren't um, cooperating, so to speak, a wide angle lens can be uh, a very difficult focal length to, uh, to capture something exciting. And that was one of the challenges that I had, but nevertheless, that was the, the, the focal length that I probably use most often for quite a while is that 16 to 35 millimeter zoom lens. Now, the other lens that I ended up keeping was a uh, 100 to 400 millimeter lens or a telephoto lens or super telephoto lens. And in one of my favorite aspects of that is that you can just isolate a subject. You can find a very small vignette, something just very tiny in your scene that you really enjoy and zoom all the way in and isolate that and capture that and create a very focused image like this. Once again, and this is a recent image from uh, my trip to the Smoky Mountains a few months ago. This is just interesting atmosphere, interesting light in this tiny little valley. And just, but zooming all the way in, it just makes the entire scene seem so much more grand, but it was just isolating this one little area. Everything that was going on around this area, it really wasn't that interesting, but this little area here was where all that magic was happening. So isolating that is really, really powerful. And then the compressing effect. It's one of my favorite aspects of a telephoto lens is that it has this illusion that it's compressing the scene, almost pulling the foreground and the background together. Obviously it's not doing that, but it creates that illusion. And I think that this image right here is a great example of that. It looks like Yosemite Falls is just a few feet away from these trees, but in reality, it's maybe a hundred yards, maybe even further but it was nowhere close to just a couple feet away, but that compressing effect, getting very far away from the seam and zooming all the way in, created that sandwiching effect that just kind of draw the viewer's eyes, draw the, draws the viewer's eye into the scene. And once again, much like a wide angle lens, this is something that's very, very different from what we see on a day-to-day -day basis with our naked eye. So once again, that right there is very unusual. And this is a, probably one of my favorite examples as well of that compressing effect. These palm trees right through here, and then these rolling hills in the background, how they're just kind of like fading off into this fog. These rolling hills in the background are miles away from these palm trees. But I was using the 400, the 100 to 400 to zoom all the way in. I think I had a two times teleconverter, so I, I had a ton of reach but it just pulled those palm trees and those hills in the background together and created this kind of layering effect. And I just absolutely love the way that they have that compressing uh, distortion, if you will. Is it considered distortion? I don't really know, but it's, a, it's an illusion, but I, I really like the way that it looks in this particular scenario. But it's great for isolating certain areas. So this is a wide angle shot right here. And the sky isn't super exciting. It looks kind of boring to me. It's a little bit of a distraction, but there is some interesting light happening all around here. So putting on a longer lens and focusing and isolating an area that's very interesting to me, the crashing waterfall right through here, this interesting little dappled light all through here. And it was just focusing in on this region right here. And I think that that, that kind of isolation Isolation, I guess quality is something that I really, really, really enjoy. And it's just such a versatile uh, lens. But the complete opposite of a wide angle lens, a telephoto lens is not condition dependent at all. So it's fantastic. It's very versatile. You don't need to have the optimal conditions to create something beautiful with a longer focal length. So those are the two lenses I kept for a long time, a wide angle zoom and a telephoto lens. And 
I, that's kind of where that, I used to say this in videos all the time. I, uh, when I opened up my bag, when I would get to a location, I only had one decision to make. It was either go wide or go long, shoot it with a wide angle lens or shoot it with the telephoto lens. And I love the, the simplicity that that uh, afforded for myself. But I do think that that kind of hurt me over time. And this is an image right here that I really started to realize that uh, I was kind of missing out on the, in all those years. And, I, and I'll get to the reason why real quick, but my big regret in only using that two lens setup for such a long time is the fact that when I would come up to a scene, it was go wide or go long, that was it. There was nothing in between there. My decision-making ability was either on one end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum. And although it might've felt good for a while, I think over time it really started to, uh, to limit the way that I would look at a composition and it kind of limit my creativity a little bit. And this image right here, this is when I first started testing out the, the GFX 100S from Fuji. And when they shipped it to me, they only gave me one lens to try out. And it was the 32 to 64, which in a medium, which is basically a, um, a mid range zoom. And I captured this image with it. And at the time I was like, oh, I wish it was a little bit wider. It felt like a limitation when I captured this. But now that I look at it, the wide angle lens that I had would have been way too wide for this scene. I should say the wide angle lens that I have now, I now have the 30, the 23 millimeter prime, which I'm not super, super excited about. Once again, lightweight lens, super sharp, but uh, Fuji did just release a zoom lens for the GFX system, a wide angle zoom, which I will, uh, once I can save up enough money, I will end up getting that as well. But I really love the way that this image came out. So I ended up actually buying this wide, this uh, mid-range zoom. And what I love about it, not only is it very versatile, but you can you can go wide still. You can go long-ish, I should say. Here's a little bit closer in shot. This is zoomed all the way in. Just to, you can still kind of pick up smaller, intimate details of your scene. It fills that millimeter gap between a wide-angle lens and a telephoto lens. And some of my favorite images I've created this year are all with this mid-range zoom. And I think it's absolutely fantastic for any type of a woodland scene. And this right here is, might be one of my favorite images captured this year. And once again, same story, a, uh, a mid-range zoom, and it just opens up just a, a whole world of possibilities. And uh, one final image right through here just definitely could not have been captured with a, a wide-angle lens or a telephoto lens. It was absolutely nothing interesting happening around here. But that uh, mid-range zoom gave me the exact focal range that I needed to capture this right here. So the versatility that that mid-range zoom offers is absolutely huge. And I feel that not only was able to create photographs that I was really excited about this year, but I feel like it really improved my photography as well. But most importantly, it just opened up a world of possibilities. It filled that millimeter gap that I was missing all those years that I, it's kind of, what is, what is that saying? Out of sight, out of mind. I didn't, I never had that mid-range zoom. So, well, I did, but I ended up selling it all. But I was missing it for all those years, but I didn't own it at the time. So I was kind of out of sight, out of mind. But once I started to test out a mid-range zoom again, I realized that I've been missing out this entire time. And you may have heard of the phrase, uh, the holy trinity of lenses, which is basically a, a wide angle zoom, a mid-range zoom, and a telephoto zoom. The, the focal lengths are really irrelevant, just something that's on the wider end. The mid-range zooms, I think the more common ones are like 24 to 70s, or maybe 24 to 105. And telephoto lenses, generally the most popular is 70 to 200. But then you got the 100 to 400, 200 to 500. I mean, they're, they're, they're going huge now, 300 to 800. So, but as long as you have the ability to do something wide, that's preferably a zoom lens in my opinion, something in the middle and something on the long edge, I think that that is what is most important. It's full coverage, gives you a lot of versatility. There are some downsides to it, of course. It's expensive, lenses are not cheap. So you're gonna to have to buy three lenses, so it's gonna be a little bit more, it's gonna be a little bit more weight, but you're gonna be able to capture really any type of a scenario that uh, you are presented with, whether you need to do mid-range, telephoto shots, wide angle shots. I mean, you have the ability to do anything. But what's most important to me is that when you have all three of these lenses, they're not condition dependent. One of them is, you know, wide angle lens is condition dependent. Maybe a mid-range zoom could be considered condition dependent. But if you're not getting the good conditions, you can just go over to the, uh, the telephoto lens. So when you have all three of those lenses together, the holy trinity of lenses, if you will, you have the ability to capture or to create something beautiful, regardless of the conditions that are presented to you. You do not have to have that explosive sunrise or sunset. You do not have to have a fog or mist. You, you, you can create anything regardless of the conditions that are presented. And I think that that is the most powerful thing. And it's something that I have really been focused on the last couple of years is being able to expand my photography to a point 
to where I can create anything anywhere, regardless of the conditions that I'm faced with, I'll be able to walk away with at least one image that I'm excited about. And to me, that is what is most important is to be able to create anything anywhere that I'm proud of. So I do think that those limiting myself to those two lenses for the couple years was a big mistake. It was something that I think slowed down my progression over time. I think if I would have been shooting with these three lenses that covers that full spectrum from wide to long for all those years, I think it would have maybe sped up my creativity a little bit, but um, you know, it's one of those things better late than never, but I am really, really excited with the three lenses that I own now. So I do hope that that was helpful. I don't want to say that you have to have these three lenses, but I would definitely recommend getting a, a wide angle uh, zoom lens, a mid range zoom lens and a telephoto zoom lens. They don't have to be the greatest lenses out there because I know that they're very expensive, but if you're just getting started out, Kit lenses are perfectly fine. I think what's most important is the focal length. Getting a wide angle focal length, mid-range focal length, and a telephoto focal length, I think that's what's most important when you're getting started. So I do hope that that information was helpful. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace who I use for absolutely everything related to my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you have any questions about anything that uh, we discussed here today, please leave those in the comments section below. And I really would, uh, or I really would, I, will, I really would appreciate it if you did as well, but I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed the video uh, a lot, if you want to uh, share it with your, your family, your friends, or your possibly your, your local photo club, that would be absolutely amazing as well. So uh, just wanna thank you for carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And uh, as always, I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.